Hello all. Well, this is the fifth or sixth take on this video, and now in this take I've got a jackhammer, I think, in the background, or a power washer or something. I hope you can concentrate on what I want to say in the next four or five minutes. We're talking about 1 John chapter 3, verses 1 through 3, just three short verses, and what John talks about here is the hope of the children of God. And we're going to do what we always do. First, we talk about what John says in this text, and then we want to talk about application. What does this text mean for us? We'll start in verse 1, where John tells us about the great love of God. And what is the evidence or demonstration of God's great love? In this verse, it is our status as the children of God. So in verse 1, he talks about the wonder of our status. We have been called the children of God, and that is what we are. To be called is the same thing as to be. I'm thinking of Matthew chapter 5, where Jesus says, Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. To be called something in the New Testament is to be that something. So we're going to relish and enjoy our status that John talks about in verse 1. We are the children of God. But then verse 2. What we will be has not yet been revealed to us, but we know that what we will be is wholly beyond our powers of imagination. We can't even begin to imagine what God has in store for us, meaning that it's great to be the children of God, but what God has in store for us will be even more wonderful. The best is yet to be. I think that's John's promise here in this passage. Now, to see God requires that we be like Him. So, a great transformation is expected. And I've got to tell you here that in verse 2, I really don't understand the last part of this verse where John says that when we see him, we will be like him. That is, when we see Jesus, we will be like God. And what John seems to be saying here is that the effect of seeing Jesus is to make us like God. I don't see the correlation of those two thoughts, but then again, I don't have to see the correlation of those two thoughts, right? I don't have to understand it. I just have to accept it and appreciate it. So, the effect of seeing Jesus my Lord in some way is going to transform me into the image of God. Wow. Verse 3. Here's a paraphrase. Everyone who has this hope in God purify themselves just as that one, Jesus, is pure. Here is the appeal to moral living. Those who come into the presence of God must themselves be pure. And so what this passage means to us is that, first of all, what we are and what we will be fills us with great hope. And that hope can carry us a long way. But also, it places us under a special obligation to try to live holy lives. And that leads us into what John is about to discuss, the sinlessness of God's children. Wait a minute. I thought John has already said that even God's children sin, chapter 1. Well, now he's going to talk about the sinlessness of God's children in chapter 3, verses 4 through 10. Looking forward to this discussion in a few days. I know you're going to enjoy this passage. God bless.